Hi, I'm Dr. Bertola Meshko, the medical futurist, and today I want to introduce you to the future of food and how our eating habits will change as digital health tools will disrupt not just healthcare, but the food industry as well. So let's take a deeper look. Food entails the creativity of humankind. We have the richest variety of ingredients, forms, shapes, tastes, and as an absolute essential element of survival, we got from innovative ways of hunting more efficiently to solving mass production. But with all that, we now have vastly different eating habits. Fast food restaurants versus healthy lifestyle, conscious cooking versus random eating patterns, obesity in the developed world versus hunger famine in the developing countries, and mass production versus local farming. In the new century, there are no unfittingly clear trends when it comes to food production and consumption. We all make many decisions every day regarding eating, but we have no real knowledge about the food on our plate. We are all left alone with that. We can send rockets to space and we can cure many types of cancer, but even in 2020, we still don't know what we should eat and when and how we should eat it. But with the advent of new digital health tools, our eating habits will change once again, helping to solve some of the most pressing issues we have today. The main problem that we can recognize today is that we have no idea what we buy at the supermarket or what gets on our plate in the canteen. Although ingredients are listed on most of the products we buy, most of us have absolutely no idea where the food comes from and what substances it contains. This is more concerning given our increased reliance on pre-packaged food over fresh ones. Globally, about 250 million people have food allergies, while about 35% of adults are overweight. By 2035, around half a billion people will have diabetes, half of them will be undiagnosed. Knowing calorie intake and ingredients are essential in preventing and managing medical issues like these. I think you know where I'm getting with this. An affordable, mobile, non-invasive solution that enables users to measure and analyze their food intake is ripe for the market. We already have working scanners to help out with specific problems like food allergies. NEMA, a Silicon Valley-based company, developed two such portable scanners, a gluten and a peanut sensor that enable users to scan samples of their food for gluten or peanut content. NEMA works beautifully. You just take a small sample, be it liquid or solid substance, put it in this capsule and connect it to the device. In a few minutes, NEMA analyzes the sample and lets you know whether your food is safe to eat. It's a game changer. And in the most severe cases, it's a literal lifesaver. But in the future, an all-in-one solution will be able to do the same and probably a whole lot more. For example, Sayo, an Israeli startup founded by people with optical engineering backgrounds, are working on a device like that. Their scanner can illuminate a food, while optical sensors detect the reflected light and the device analyzes it using a cloud-based database. The company promised that in milliseconds, the ingredient and molecular makeup of the foodstuff will appear on the user's smartphone. Unfortunately, it hasn't come to fruition yet and they are heavily criticized for overstating their capabilities but since there is a ripe niche market for a working food scanner, expect others to appear in the foreseeable future. Now, even if we know precisely what's on our plate, how can we tell what we should or shouldn't eat? Just think about the contradicting trends we see today like veganism versus the carnivore diet. No wonder people are puzzled about what diet to choose. This is where nutrigenomics comes in. What if? I tell you the reason we see so many entirely different diets with their own success stories. It's because they all work but on an individual level. Since our genetic makeup varies from individual to individual, it inadvertently affects how we react to the food we consume. Now what if we could analyze that genetic makeup and determine exactly what diet would my body respond best to? Not just in terms of fitness, but in terms of staying healthy. That's what nutrigenomics promises. It looks at your genetic makeup and explores how it affects the way your body uniquely processes food. It was the increased accessibility to DNA sequencing services that opened the door for this new field and I fully expect it to be the next big dietary trend. 
Startups like Habit, Neutrino and DNA Fit are shifting our reliance on blind luck to science. After a genetic analysis, they lay out personalized diet and even workout plans to maintain a healthy lifestyle. And how does Habit work? Yeah, so Habit is the world's first personalized nutrition company where we look into your DNA, your blood work, and your metabolic function to unlock the nutrition insights that live inside of you. And so we take all of that and we give you a report which tells you all the findings that we had, but then we also craft a personalized nutrition plan for you. Think of it as like a New York Times best-selling nutrition book made just for you. Besides sequencing your DNA, it is possible to sequence the DNA of the bacteria in your guts that's called the microbiome. This collection of bacteria isn't just responsible for digesting food, but it actually plays an enormous part in the state of our immune system. It makes sense to listen to it. Companies like Atlas Biomed and Thrive offer direct-to-consumer kits that analyze one's microbiome and offer personalized diet plans based on individual results. They also offer weekly recommendations on what to eat. Now, add food scanners to the table and you will see a picture emerging of the future where you will have a genetics-based diet and an app will tell you what products not to buy at the grocery store or what type of food will make you more productive, sleep better or just feel generally more healthy. So with knowing what our body needs and being able to recognize those foods that are a great match for us on an individual level, the next great question we can seem to tackle is our eating routines. Some of us have strict eating routines while others eat whenever they feel like. Some of us eat slowly while others finish a ribeye steak in a blink of an eye. But do we actually know which choice is healthier? Technology and innovation might not be enough in themselves to solve every problem with food consumption, but there isn't a lack of trying. Happy Fork is a smart fork that vibrates if you eat too fast, alerting you to slow your pace. And then you eat, and you chew, and then if you take another bite within 10 seconds, you feel like you're eating really fast. Oh, it vibrated because I'm eating too fast. I should slow down and not eat so fast. If you wait 10 seconds, then Happy Fork is happy. Happy Fork's focus on slow eating is based on a few studies that showed correlation between the speed of eating and diabetes, obesity. But with slow eating, you can also avoid digestion problems and reflux, while it can lead to better weight control in the long run. It's proven that if you eat faster, you will eat more. And through Happy Fork's companion app, you can further analyze your eating habits and track your improvements. Now, to take a step back from the individual level, let's address the schizophrenic nature of our global food consumption. Half of the world is obese, while the other half is fighting hunger. More than 800 million people don't have adequate nutrition, and that's around 1 in 9 people globally. In Eastern Africa, nearly a third of the population is undernourished. Given that traditional approaches haven't solved the problem, we might ask what technology can offer. With the global meat consumption having nearly doubled in the past 50 years and showing no signs of slowing down, we must find alternatives. Luckily, demand for meatless options are also on the rise and development in this field can help address the issue of food shortages. Companies like Impossible Foods and Beyond Meat produce plant-based burgers and have even been adopted and popularized by fast food companies like Burger King. Others are taking a different approach, and from a few cells, companies like Modern Meadow can create tens of tons of lab-cultured meat. It's not just the solution for high demands, but to the effects our meat consumption has on the climate. Simply put, the future is cultured, not slaughtered. And as we move from mass to efficient production, our food consumption will be a lot more sustainable as well as innovative. 3D printing, for example, is also trying to disrupt this field like many others, and in the future, making a meal can look a lot like making one of those Nespresso cappuccinos. Until recently, 3D printing has been sugar-based, but technology is emerging that reliably prints savory and fresh ingredients too. A startup called Natural Machines has already developed a kitchen appliance that can be loaded with multiple ingredient capsules to create and cook different types of foods. Another company, called BioZoon, takes fresh food items and changes their texture through 3D printing, so they will be edible for people who have difficulty chewing or swallowing. 
As you can see, there are thousands of new technologies that could help deal with the issues that I described before. However, it's our responsibility that there won't be robotic chefs moving around in our kitchen, but eating and cooking will remain a cultural and social component of our lives. If you want to hear more about the future of eating and other habits, please subscribe below.